A Girl Named Misty, The True Story of Misty Copeland, by Kelly Starling Lyons. Introduction Misty Copeland loved to dance. Growing up, Misty was a shy African-American girl who blended into the background of her big family. Little did she know that one day she would be a star. From the start, the passion inside Misty shone through each twirl and leap. Dancing made her feel free and strong. This quiet little girl's talent would lead her to become a groundbreaking dancer at one of the top ballet companies in the world. Chapter 1, Finding Her Shine Change was a part of Misty's childhood. Born on September 10, 1982 in Kansas City, Missouri, she moved with her mom, Sylvia De La Carna, and siblings to Southern California when she was two. Over the years, they moved between apartments and houses. Sometimes Misty's families had to make do with little money. With two big brothers, a big sister, and a younger brother and sister, Misty had to share her mom's attention. Misty lit up when her mom complimented something she had done. She pushed herself to be perfect in school, but worries nagged her. What if her best wasn't good enough? What if they moved again? At a home in San Pedro, California, seven-year-old Misty was watching TV when a movie about an Olympic gymnast, Nadia Comaneci, came on. Her flips, spins, and leaps across the floor amazed Misty. Watching Nadia's mix of acrobatics and dance made her want to move like that, too. In the yard, Misty taught herself how to do cartwheels and handstands. She was able to master gymnastic moves with little effort. Misty pretended to perform for an audience and imagined their roaring applause when she did all her moves just right. Something special filled Misty's heart when she heard Mariah Carey songs, too. She felt a connection to Mariah, who was biracial like she was. Misty's mom and dad were both half black and half white. Seeing someone who looked like her being successful and achieving her own dream inspired Misty. When Misty made up dances in her bedroom, she was able to act out the words and feelings as the music flowed through her. It was like a light flipped on inside her and she began to shine. Misty's worries about school, money, and where they lived disappeared as she danced. Chapter 2. Stepping Out In middle school, Misty set a huge goal that would change her life. She wanted to earn a spot on the drill team, a type of dance group. And not just any spot. Misty was determined to be captain. Her big sister Erica had been a star on that same team. Her mom had been a professional cheerleader. Could Misty, the girl who was afraid to read aloud in class, really become the leader of the group? On audition day, Misty stepped in front of the judges and gave it her all. She not only became the captain, but caught the eye of Coach Elizabeth Canteen, who had studied ballet. As Coach Canteen watched Misty during practice and at shows, she knew Misty had a gift. Coach Canteen told Misty a friend of hers was teaching ballet at the San Pedro Boys and Girls Club. Misty was nervous about taking the class. After school, she sat on the bleachers at the Boys and Girls Club watching other children learn basic ballet steps. For two weeks, she just sat there. Not even the ballet teacher's encouragement could get her to join in. Then, one day, Misty changed into a t-shirt, shorts, and socks and decided to give ballet a chance. Surrounded by kids wearing leotards and tights, she felt out of place. Misty was usually confident when she danced, but not this time. The moves made her feel awkward and insecure. By the end of class, she'd had enough. Misty decided her time with ballet was done. Chapter 3 Putting in work. Cindy Bradley, who taught the ballet class at the Boys and Girls Club, had other plans. From the beginning, she saw Misty's talent. She convinced her to come back. At age 13, Misty was much older than most beginners, but she was a natural. Cindy offered Misty a full scholarship to her ballet school so she could learn more. All of her classes and ballet clothes would be free. 
Misty's mom was so proud of her daughter for earning a chance to develop her talent. Almost every day, Misty went to Cindy's studio. The classes were grueling and required a lot of focus, but every step, leap, and spin filled Misty with joy. Soon, Misty was excelling. Nothing could stop her. Just two months after starting ballet classes, Misty went on point, on the tips of her toes. Dancing on point is a skill that takes most dancers years to master. Cindy told Misty that she was perfect for ballet. She could perform moves easily that usually take a lot of training and practice. She had a ballerina's form. Misty knew in her heart ballet was where she belonged. Meanwhile, life at home was getting harder. Misty's family had to find another place to live and had moved into a motel room. Her sister Erica took the long bus with Misty from Cindy's studio back to their home. Between school, her daily ballet practice, and a long bus ride, Misty was gone a lot. Misty's mom worried that Misty was away from her family and friends too much. Her mom said Misty must give up ballet. Chapter 4, The Making of a Star Misty was devastated at the thought of not taking ballet anymore. She told Cindy the news. Cindy asked Misty's mom if Misty could live with Cindy's family during the week so that Misty would be able to be close to the studio. Misty would go home every weekend. It was a tough decision, but Misty's mom agreed. At Cindy's studio, Misty got better and better. She mastered every move and took advanced classes, pushing herself to be the best. People called her a prodigy, a young person with an amazing skill. She watched ballet on TV and carried dance magazines in her backpack. Ballet was her life. Though she loved ballet, Misty had never actually seen a live performance until Cindy took her to see Don Quixote. At just 19, the star of the show, Paloma Herrera, had become principal dancer at American Ballet Theater, ABT, in New York City. ABT was one of the top ballet companies or performing groups in the world. Misty had watched Paloma and dreamed of being an ABT principal dancer too. Meanwhile, Misty's mom and siblings cheered as she dazzled audiences with her performances like in The Nutcracker and The Chocolate Nutcracker. Becoming a great ballerina meant working long hours. Some weekends, Misty didn't have time to come home. That upset her mom. She loved Misty and wanted her to be happy and keep dancing, but felt she should be spending time with her family. Cindy also loved her and wanted her to keep living and training with her. Misty felt torn apart. Chapter 5, City of Dreams In time, it was decided Misty would live with her mom and siblings and go to a different ballet studio closer to home. After a while, Misty's mom got a new job and moved her family from the motel to a nice apartment. Misty worked hard at the new ballet studio and even earned an invitation to a summer program at American Ballet Theater. Misty's dedication and talent wowed the people at ABT. The next year, after Misty graduated from high school, she moved to New York City to become a member of ABT, the same company that her idol, Paloma Herrera, danced for. Walking around the busy streets of New York City, Misty saw a beautiful mix of people of different races and backgrounds living and working together. But inside ABT, she saw something else. When she was promoted at the age of 19 to the Corp de Ballet, a permanent member of the main ballet company, Misty was the only black woman out of a dozens of dancers. Shortly after joining the ballet, Misty felt terrible pain while dancing. She injured her back and would need a year to recover. When Misty returned to ABT, she had changed. Her thin body had matured and had more curves, a shape some thought wasn't right for ballet. It hurt Misty to know that some people didn't think women with brown skin and curves should be ballerinas. Over time, other African Americans in the world of ballet helped Misty see that she belonged. 
she was not just dancing for herself anymore. She was dancing for every African-American ballerina who never had a chance to rise to the top. She danced for all the kids who would one day follow her example. Misty found strength in them and in herself. Chapter 6, Dancing in the Spotlight Misty showed everyone she deserved the spotlight. At the age of 24, she became a soloist. Misty was only the second African-American female soloist in the company's history. Five years later, she got the role of a lifetime in The Firebird. This famous ballet about a magical bird who helps a prince defeat an evil sorcerer had been around for more than 100 years. Misty would be the first African-American woman to dance the role of the Firebird for a major ballet company. For months, Misty poured all of herself into practicing. Even when her leg began to hurt, she kept going. Misty pushed through the pain, not realizing she had several fractures, a type of serious injury that could threaten her career. One day, Misty saw a huge banner hanging outside of the Metropolitan Opera House. It was a photo of her as the Firebird. She teared up when she saw it. Many girls would see her brown skin and curves and see a reflection of themselves. In opening night of the packed performance, Misty's pain was horrible. She focused instead on all of the people who believed in her and became the Firebird. Days later, Misty knew she couldn't continue. She had to take another break from ABT to have a major surgery. Would she be able to return? Not only did Misty come back to ABT three years after her performance as the Firebird, the artistic director of ABT told Misty Copeland to take a bow. She had been promoted to principal dancer, the highest level a dancer can reach. Misty had finally achieved her dream. She was the first African-American female principal dancer in the company's history. As her ABT family cheered for her, she could feel the world applauding too. Misty, the shy little girl with big talent, had become the star she always knew she was meant to be.